What's going on YouTube? Today, I wanna to talk to you about building a spiral Christmas tree. My name's Andy, this is Cedar River Woodworking. Welcome to the show. So lately, I have been seeing some spiral Christmas trees going around and I wanted to see what it would be like to build it out of fence pickets. I've seen them made out of two by fours, but how many fence pickets does it take to, to make the same product? Here is said spiral Christmas tree. Now, I will let you know that these take three. You've probably already seen the thumbnail. You know that it takes three. Let's dive in and show you exactly how we can make one of these. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we do build videos just like this one to help bring your hobbyist woodworking to the next level. Now we're gonna go ahead and set our saw to an inch and a half, and we are going to rip down two of our three fence pickets. Now setting the saw height, I'm just gonna have the teeth just slightly above the height of the board. The other fence picket is going to go ahead and it is gonna get cut for some of our base pieces. Now, if you haven't tried one of these grippers before, I highly recommend it. I have a little claw on the back, back end of it that helps to push along with it, other than just relying on the grippers on the bottom of the gripper. Now, moving over to the miter saw, we're just gonna go ahead and stack these at five tall because all of our cuts are going to include five of each. I'm just gonna cut the end off of here to make it a little smoother and everything's all lined up. Make sure you clear out those extra chips because they can bind up your saw. Now, cutting our first cut here at 13 and a half inches. Here's a list of everything that you're gonna need for your cuts. If you can't read my handwriting, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it down in the description of all of the cuts that you will need for this build. Now on top of your three fence pickets, you are going to need one 36 inch dowel rod at five eighths of an inch thick. Now off camera, I did cut some of these base pieces and then I ripped them in half to get our two and three quarter inch width of each piece. Now stacking up our pieces here on the outfeed table, it's just gonna give you a general idea of what it's going to look like and how tall it will be at the end. Mine is a total of 24 inches tall. Once we have everything laid out, I'm gonna go ahead and mark center on the top and bottom pieces. Now I do show that I'm clamping this here to keep everything a little bit tighter together. But as you can see, I take some of those clamps off to use a square to mark everything out. This is a 12 inch long square, so I can just go top and bottom and reach all the way across. Now after that, on the top piece, I'm just gonna mark an inch in from the center line. And then we're gonna go ahead and clamp everything back together so that we can run a straight edge from that mark to the corners of the tree at the base. This is gonna establish what our tree will look like and the overall shape when it's in its flat configuration. Now, I was gonna go ahead and try and use my track saw here, and this is about the time that I found out that I needed to replace the blade on my track saw to get it very dull. So as an alternative, I took everything over to my miter saw, set everything to a 13 degree angle, and go ahead and cut everything on that line that we just described. 
Once you have one side completed, you're obviously going to have to switch to the other 13 degrees and cut the other side of your pieces. Next, we're gonna drill some holes. What I did was I took a piece of scrap block that's the same thickness as these slats here, and I drew on center line and wrapped it up and over the top so that I could get a center point. And that's gonna be where my drill is gonna go in. If you do have a square like this where you can go over the edge, you can find all of these marks here and mark them all out in the center. But this is gonna be way faster for you. If you do have a drill press, setting up a fence on your drill press and just marking similar to how this little block is set up would be the fastest option that you can do. You could even drill into multiple at the same time. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I wanna say thank you. Let me know if you would decorate this tree with anything. You can put cup hooks on the side, glue some lights to it, however. But if you like this so far, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. So how we're gonna make the base is essentially we're gonna do some additive jointery. Uh, we're gonna be doing some half laps, just uh, adding pieces to the side to make our half laps. So we're just gonna put some glue on this base layer here. I'm not gonna put a ton on just because I don't want a lot of squeeze out on these. And then what that's gonna do is we're gonna sandwich our top piece on there, just in the opposite direction. So these are, these long pieces are eight inches. And the short pieces are two and three quarter inches. Then once you have everything lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and just tack these together with one inch brad nails. Now your depth control is going to be imperative because these are only 5 8 inch thick. So if you push too far, it's gonna go down into your table. Now for our next layer, we're just going to do the same thing. Top piece is a six inch by two and three quarter. And the side pieces are one and three quarter by two and three quarter. And our top piece is just gonna be a two and three quarter by two and three quarter to give us this nice little pyramid look here. I should have said, you need to be careful where you put these brad nails in the middle because we are gonna drill a hole in there. And we're gonna drill a 5 8 inch hole for our dowel rod to fit into. All right, now that we have all of our pieces cut and all of our holes drilled, we are gonna go ahead and assemble this tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue here in the base to glue in this rod. Give it a good twist so it spreads all over it. Fits pretty tight. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start the trees. I did pre-mark about 10 inches from the base to here to give us a little bit of a trunk area and we know where our first piece is gonna hit. So I'm just barely gonna cover that mark Square everything up and I'm going to pre-drill I'm going to go ahead and run a screw in there Now we're gonna get the rest of that tree assembled. Now, if you wanted to make this base a little bit bigger, you could use a four by four and drill a three quarter inch hole in it so that it slides down over the trunk completely. It'll give you a beefier looking trunk on that. These pieces at five eighths of an inch 
with a Forzner bit do fit on there fairly tight. Once you have your tree completely assembled, you can go ahead and give it that spiral look by twisting the slats so that they slightly overlap each other on each layer. So after assembly, I went ahead and I cut out this star just kind of as a topper. Uh, I cut it out by hand with a jigsaw. If you have a bandsaw, it'd probably work pretty well too. But um, overall, without any jigs or anything like that, uh, it took me probably about three hours to make this. Uh, I plan to make an even larger version of it uh, to put in my home. This one's gonna go out for sale. And uh, we'll see how long it takes to do the big one. The big one I plan to do about a seven foot tree and I will let you know on how many fence pickets that takes to build. I hope that you have enjoyed this so far, uh, building this Christmas tree. If you did like it, please consider subscribing and hit the like button. For now, my name is Andy. This has been Cedar River Woodworking and I will see you in the next video.